me exactly what happened. You were on this flight and the, the co-pilot's name is Farik Abdul Hamid. What happened? Um, so basically my friend and I were standing in line at the boarding gate with all the other passengers waiting to board. Um, and the, the co-pilot co and pilot walked past us and then came back to us and asked us if we would like to sit with them in the cockpit during the flight. Um, so we said yes. We boarded the plane normally with all the other passengers and went our seat. Um, a short while after taking our seat, uh, air hostess came to us and asked us if we would like to move into the cockpit, um, after which we did, and that's where we spent the flight. And they were, they were smoking and posing for pictures with you in the cockpit? They were smoking, and yes, they were posing for pictures, but I'd just like to make it very clear that I don't think they were distracted at all by posing for pictures. Um, we did take pictures with them, but I don't think it was a distraction. No, but having said that, you must have been as surprised as I'm sure all our viewers are at the ease of access of people they didn't know, presumably at all before this, to go into a cockpit at all. Um, yeah, I was I was pretty surprised by it, but I thought that the fact that they're doing it must mean that it's something that happens quite often. Um, I didn't realise how much against regulation it was. I actually thought it was something that was allowed. If they were doing it, I assumed they were allowed to be doing it. Yeah, I mean, I think that I, I can remember when I was much, much younger, you know, sometimes a pilot would invite young kids into the to have a quick look at the cockpit, but certainly after 9-11, everything changed pretty dramatically. I, I assumed every airline. That's why this story uh, coming when it did is so shocking, I think. But, uh, did you get the feeling they'd done this before with other people? Um, yes, it didn't feel like it was something new to them. The crew also seemed to be quite comfortable with it, so it felt to me like it was something that had possibly happened before. I want to read a statement from Malaysia Airlines, uh, which says this. Malaysia Airlines has become aware of the allegations being made against First Officer Farik Ab Hamid, which we take very seriously. We are shocked by these allegations. We've not been able to confirm the validity of the pictures and videos of the alleged incident. As you are aware, we're in the midst of a crisis and we don't want to divert our attention. The welfare of both the crew and passengers' family remain our focus. At the same time, the security and safety of our passengers is of the utmost importance to us. Uh, obviously, uh, John T. Ruiz a lot of concern about all aspects of security here. There have been people with stolen passports on this particular flight that's disappeared uh, and so on. And clearly your testimony is important because it just shows a pretty lax attitude generally by at least one of the pilots involved in this flight to general security on the plane itself. Yes, look, um, I think possibly security was a little bit lax, but I'm in no way trying to... Um imply that the co-pilots or the pilots were at fault in any way. Um, this is just my experience, and I'm just telling it factually how it happened. When you heard what had happened, how did you realise it was the same pilot? Um, I was scrolling through my Facebook, because I was friends with him on Facebook, I was scrolling through my Facebook news feed, and I saw a whole lot of people tagging this person in posts, saying that they're so sorry to hear about what happened, that, that their heart goes up there. So I clicked on this person to see what had happened or what was going on, um, and that's when I realised that he was a pilot, and then I realised he was one of the pilots on the plane, and then I realised that it was the same co-pilot that was on my flight. 